said, I can't go home. Yeah, Are we squeezing in between? George. I, George I, and I, I know. In the, oh, we, we had know. talked about this on Monday. I know, but I'm okay. thinking Nika would like to be here if we're going to do it, but she's Wish not she had here. the site walk? Yeah, here. I it's mean. It's only one after seven. That's right. I think if we give her five minutes. Okay. Ah, see? There you go. Hey, you got four anyway. Um, Mr. Alley, would you mind if we... Uh, take it, take it. Okay. No, no, no. Good morning. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm just here on uh, talking about the uh, privacy fence and the possibility of the what, 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 what picket fence to define the backyard. I do have copies if somebody wants to Take them for uh, um, This is the same thing we had uh, three weeks ago, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. If it's the same, I don't need it. Yeah. Okay. It's but exactly the same. Okay. So basically, on the left hand side, the neighbor's yard is extremely distracting to people. So we're trying to solve that issue, uh, and then in the, the back was simply to make the yard more attractive, and uh, people don't quite see it my way because I have two little grandsons. I worry sometimes somebody might think that right now it's pretty dry back there, but sometimes there is significant water back there. 
Um, and uh, I know there's been already two site visits, so I'm sure you've seen plenty. Um, so I'd just like to hear your viewpoints. We had a site visit uh, Monday. Yep. Yeah. Two, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Last one was on Monday. And uh, we did notice that uh, you put in um, uh, trees along the, the, wall. Yeah, the left yeah. side. Right. I guess that eliminates part of your wall that you were thinking about. And I then understand. from the end of that, I, I think that you wanted to put in a privacy fence down to, it looks like the 25 foot. Um, yeah, 25 right. foot line. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't, this was kind of scribbled. I'm not even sure where that boulder is located on this. Uh, you know, that not quite a boulder, but that large mm -hmm. stone. Um, it, it's really just to uh, avoid the unsightliness of the neighbors and busy things out there. And then I understood that you wanted to put in some kind of a child safety fence right. uh, along the back um, and I think guess one of the issues I might have with where you are looking to put it is is very close to wetland flag 7a in fact 7a looks closer to that 33 inch tree my feeling is well, seven A the one that was missing. Yeah, was seven A the one we couldn't find? And we thought it was a straight line between six A and eight A, and if you look at this, it, it's not. I, seven the A eight A out. seems to be off. Eight A looks like it's in the other person's shack. Yeah. yeah. But we did find eight A in the in the field. Trees, yeah. It was seven A. Right, up like up. Yeah, sort of I thought up it, like there. I thought it was up more to where the where the fence yeah. turns. So my concern is if you stick. <laughs> fencing <coughs> right next to this tree, I see exposed roots. So I think you might have issues an issues with, with the tree, and I wondered if you could put it up on the upland side of that 33-inch tree. I don't know how the other members feel about that. Well, I, would, I certainly wouldn't want to damage the house on that tree. Um, the, uh, could you maybe just draw over your, uh, with your pen the suggestion that you have? I'm going to do that, what we talked about. We so the, the thought, thought is um, here's a 25 foot line. I'm going to come across, come in front of that tree, of the and tree. then meet up with the 25 foot line on the other side. Okay. I mean, I can look at that my, my, when, when I uh, go to the property. My feeling was I probably will not and the uh, funding to do that unless it was absolutely required. If it made, right now with those trees in that wetland foliage or whatever we want to call it, it makes the yard feel larger. So if I was to bring it in front of the tree, it would it probably be small. negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would defeat my purpose. I think um, most importantly, you want to, you know, buffer that neighbor on that. Yeah. On that yeah. On the side. Side. So we feel, we feel, you feel, Okay with the privacy. Yes. Okay with that. I think, I think, I think that's a consensus. You're, you're trying to get so which, close to which it. fence being the, 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 the one along one. the west. Yes. 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 Oh, I agree. I think I think you already have a certain amount of privacy with the existing plantings and the right. wall yeah, took, right next to the house. That took a lot of work to get them to agree to that. Sure. So but I think it's kind of good. essential in that backyard portion if you want to have any sort of privacy or property boundary kind of set up, you know, that there be I think some my only concern there is, and it's possible I could put like some type of heightened, even a two foot wall and bushes above that. They're, they're quite expensive as some right. people probably know, but I don't know if I, I might look a little odd to have just this fencing stuck out beyond that tree. Well, I, I don't think we have a problem on that west Side right, with either right. fencing or a wall and planning, whichever you right. prefer is your to do. Right. So, okay, well, I, I will I, go back with the where I do, through the line there. I do want to comment um, <coughs> from my standpoint, and this is simply my, you know, my opinion. It's not obviously clearly not the consensus of the commission. Um, you know, would you? 
Would you entertain the thought of just simply putting the fence, the fencing back here, um, and then just leaving this open and maybe keeping a couple of additional <clears throat> plantings? Because I know at least here near between 7A and in the vicinity of 7A, there is a shrub line, you know, kind of like a tree line, right. little cloud symbol there. But honestly, that's kind of grassy. Right. That's like a grassy low area. So I think maybe this tree line squiggles may be made from an aerial photo because it doesn't represent brush or for you know a place where there's a lot of undergrowth right. um so i mean i just knowing i mean for if i were buying this house and <laughs> right <laughs> kind of wish i were but yeah. um that being said you know i would I would love to see a backyard with a natural slope down to the wetlands, and the wetlands open. They're such a okay. fantastic okay. screen on their own. I think putting a fence through there makes it pretty complicated okay. in terms of trying to finagle it for your own, you know, around the roots and up here okay. and down okay. there. I mean, uh, I'm probably just going to go that way. It was really, I've had some open houses there because I'm also a real estate agent, and there's been. Gotcha. They're, they're, they're not at correct because I've mentioned this before, but they say this has a large lot but very little usable land right. compared to other new right. construction has small lots to begin with. Right. So it's hard to communicate that. So, but you know, my wife agrees that the openness and the beautiful foliage back there is an asset, not a negative. And, and with kids, if my kids were in that backyard, they would run to all the bushes okay. and hide in them. And, okay. I mean, but. But that's my, I mean, that's yeah. my kids, and, I, and I'm not, yeah. well, I'm not I, buying this, and other people might have other preferences. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Right, so. Well, uh, along those lines, yeah. I propose we approve a minor plan, cha plan change to install either a wall yeah. or a privacy fence on the west side of the property. Okay. Uh, not to extend past the 35 Not foot to extend the past the, I would even, I, I'd even be okay taking it to 25. I, I, I would as well yeah. in this situation because the neighbor's yard, right. well, wherever the, the bush, the shrubs really do. Well, that's right down to the wetland. That's right down to 1A. Is it? Did Have you guys gone to that far flag and yeah. checked that? Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. good with the 25-foot line. That's okay. how he has it shown You're right, right here. So okay. I would propose yeah. that okay. minor plan change. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, okay. you. thank you for thank coming you. in. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Zamboris. Yes, good evening. Good evening. You have a few things on the agenda, I understand. A few? Um, but just one. No, don't we have um, Belmont and Ivy and then the Beaver Dam? Oh, I forgot the Beaver Dam. Okay, yeah. So I guess. Where is this on the agenda? It's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're off the grid. We're off the grid. Okay. And Mr. Zomboros would like to go ahead, like, wanted to go first. Yeah. I guess we'll give it to him. But you will. So I guess you had some concerns when you went to the Just easement. Barely. And well, what are the concerns? Are we discussing first? I'm sorry, Belmont and Ivy? Is Belmont and Ivy. And I think we want to think. Yeah, I know. Yep. I know so it. Thanks. Yeah. Is this when you went on the um, eighth? I'll, I'll start. Yeah. 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 Here's the top five. And, and I don't have the benefit of the, the of, uh, remembering exactly what we said yeah. in the order well, of I can, conditions. I can show you. Okay, please do. Um, this is the plan that was filed. This is what I got. Um, all the trees that are darkened were to be cut right. and removed. Right. Um, and if you and if you notice, I'll zoom in a little bit more. The sewer line is over here, and as we as always said, 
which was contradictory by a few people, that basically with the sewer line went through, we had about a 15, 12 to 15 foot wide access road. And what we were going to do is install the water main over here to the side. And based on the commission's uh, comments and our wetland scientists, what was agreed to, and this was the report that was submitted, we're taking 19 trees down, two of which, two of which were in private property, the rest were on within the easement. And it was agreed that we would, uh, except for the trees that were right in line with the water main, those are the only ones that we would remove the root structure. Everything, all the other trees that were outside the trench limits, we would cut flush. And that's exactly what we did. Um, oh, can you go back to that, please? I was just reading it. I'm sorry. Well, it says in the next to last sentence, oh, it is sentence. expected that these stumps will re-sprout within a year. We have only, we only went through this thing about a month ago. But they are no stumps, George. Yes, they are. They are those high stumps for four or five trees, but the rest of it is nothing but bare soil. There is not, that's in, totally incorrect. Uh, we walked it. There's stumps there. There, um, there are stumps there. I, I photographed that site visit, and in the site <coughs> visit notes, I said nine mature trees cut based on my photo. So nine stumps mm -hmm. that right. could be photographed, not removed. To there, the were, there were some that were cut flush. The ones that are cut flush, there may be a few inches of soil on top of them. But, but I could the only see. root balls that were removed, the ones that were right in line with the, um, so. right in line of the pipe. That is it. So I counted nine stumps, nine clean stumps is what I counted. Very near. That's, these are some of the pictures that, you know, Chuck took too. There's some stumps that are cut like this. There's, the larger ones are sticking up. Right. The ones that were out of the 19, some of the, it was the only thing we counted was anything that was six inches and larger. The ones that are six inches, those were cut flush with the ground, and they're probably just bailed. You could, you, you, they probably get covered with topsoil. But the ones that are smaller than six inches are totally gone. They will never re sprite, George. We did not indicate any trees less than six inches in diameter. But, but the, may, may I the, just back all up? The, may, may I just all say one the thing? shrubs are gone, all the roots Can from all the shrubs, there's no leaf litter, there's no A horizon soil, it's nothing but mud, a little bit of gravel, and also a, a, a lot of the stuff that you cut was just thrown in the wetlands. This is, this is, a, this oh, is, this is a lot of the stuff that you cut was just thrown in the wetlands. It wasn't carried off site. That was, direct, that was under the, that was, we were directed to do that a lot of times. When we were in wetlands, we, uh, the trees were asked many times not to move the trees, to leave the trees in there for the wildlife. The, these weren't trees. These are stumps and logs that were thrown from the right of way into the wetlands. And they're still there. I was there yesterday and took this picture. They're outside of the silt fence and they're just piled up with other brush and debris in the wetlands. We can, if you want them removed, we can remove them. Jamie, did you submit those pictures so we can see them too? No, I just took them yesterday. This is a cross section of trench. This is the gravel I'm talking about. That's there. Was, George, could you remind me what the replanting plan is for the right of way? For the right of way, it was to let the natural growth go back, and there was uh, wild and there was um, wildlife mix to be replanted in this uh, eaten right away. In the has, has that been done yet? Mm -hmm. um, the, this is. Was that done yesterday, Jamie? Yeah. When was that? You can, was that you can done? remember. I, you sh you are probably the only one that remembers these pictures, Jamie. These were the pictures that were displayed at town meeting when we asked for the easement. This is what the easement looked like before we even started. Right. You'll notice the soil is stable, it's covered with vegetation. There are root mats in there. Yeah. And we want it to look it like will, that again. It, 
This is the easement. It'll grow back in there. This is the easement. This is what we went through. If we get a big storm, what little soil there is going to wash off, George? There's that is no, not. There's the, no straw I, I, over it. I'm there's sorry, nothing I, to stabilize that soil. I'm sorry, I disagree with you. That soil is not going anywhere. It's all peat. It's mud. I have it on my shoes. It's peat. Yeah, it's peat. That's all we dug through. And it'll wash away. I think that the commission needs to take a lesson from this, and we need to be much more specific. We had, um, if you'll remember, going back to town meeting, mm -hmm. there we, you stood up at town meeting floor and said we would use trenchless construction. And, and we, you got the support of this commission. Now, I understand we couldn't do trenchless construction, and I understand why. Mm -hmm. But we wanted minimal disruption, minimal um, devegetation. Because and you, we couldn't do trenchless and concentration, I, and what that looks like is like a D9 went right through I, there. And I beg, beg to differ you. You have minimal destruction. This is <coughs> this is the sewer easement. Our water main went on this side. We didn't clear anything out in the sewer easement. We only cleared where the water main's going. George, the, the, the sewer easement, there's nothing on it. There's nothing but mud. There's nothing All on this. All that vegetation you see on the left-hand side is gone. There's nothing on this. Well, I see vegetation going down there. I see stable soil. I see root mass. I see sprites. All it's gone. Well, the, the leaf I, litter was scraped off. There's not a leaf on there. Jamie, well, there is now that just fell this week. I don't know what you want. We just okay, got, that's what I said. We me. need to excuse take me. a lesson. Excuse me. I don't know what you want. We just went through there. You did a site visit three days after we went through. Give us time to get something to grow. We haven't even made a growing season yet. It's not a lawn. We don't put sod down. We have to seed and we have to get things to grow. I don't know what you expect when you're there less than a week after we went through there with a backhoe. George, when was the seeding done? I don't know the exact. It was done the following week after uh, we went through. And was it just um, just hand thrown? Yes. Yeah. So when did you do the work, George? Um, I think it was the Friday before you went on the site visit. What the exact day that was? Do you remember what day that was, Chuck? Uh, probably I know it was the Friday. They went through the seven, whole easement. Six, about the they six. went through the whole easement on a Friday. The first I mean, week a, of October. Right, yeah. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I think it was a fast job. Yeah, they went. They got through it in one day and did the, bro and did the brook yeah. crossing the next yeah. morning. Well, as, as I said, I think the commission needs to take a lesson from this. We need very, to be very specific in the order of conditions, what we expect. Well, do we have well a when you, when you have a when you have a 12 foot wide backhoe going through there installing a water main and you have to put spoil pile on the other side, you're going to have a 25 foot wide clearing. I, I don't know what you were expecting. And part of that clearing was a 15 to 18 foot wide path that was already cleared from the from the sewer work years ago. Tell us again why you had to clear everything over the existing sewer line. All that was there was brush. Right. Well, how are you going to get a, how are you going to get equipment down there to put the pipe in the ground? I'm just saying why. So the equipment had to go over the sewer line. The equipment had to go over the sewer line. Yes. And we had to. And, and you also when you're digging a trench. We, we were digging, the water main was truly in wetland soils. We were right on the edge of the gravel. Right. You need a place to cast material. The material was cast over the sewer line. Right. And then, and then the material was put back in. Right. One backhoe was digging and installing pipe, and the other one was following and backfilling and putting in the clay dams. And was there soil erosion on the, the side, on the right hand side put in? Was that there's, there's straw wattles on each side lining the whole thing. Still? It's still there. This, and this and picture, were they working? This picture's from this morning. They seem to be working pretty well. This, this picture from this morning. during the rain, but... Okay. It's, it's a fairly flat territory. I mean, yeah. you can see here. Um, you know, a, that a, yeah. easement area is maybe... When we first walked it before the project, it was maybe, I don't know, four to six inches above... The surrounding wetland, I'm guessing. They, they were spots where in high water the water went over top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and when we walked it, the soil, did, by my 
by my determination, was fairly soft. You know, so so I don't think I didn't get the impression that there was real severe mechanical compacting of the soil based Actually, on the activities. The there may have been some additional fill, like um, was there some? What, Jamie, do you remember some gravel? There some crushed a little bit no, of crushed gravel no in there. there was there him, was some. No material was imported maybe, for this portion of the job. Maybe the only that thing was, was left over. From the only thing was the, there was no. We did not put stone on the pipe. We did not put sand around the pipe. I didn't even see tracks. We just put because we walked us. The contractor walked themselves up. Gotcha. There was no stone, no sand, no no materials whatsoever except for pipe that was brought into the season. Yeah. So, so the only, if you're seeing any gravel, you're seeing the gravel that was left over that was installed on top of the sewer, the sewer uh, easement. And it, and it was nothing like uh, that, that new road out off Walker's Brook. No, I, I have a picture of that gravel. Um, so oh. what I'm hearing is that what, what we're looking at here in this picture it is not the working site. He needs to clear out. That's the pre-construction. Right. Right. That's pre-construction. He needs this to clear pre out the left-hand side of this site because that's where the where the water's going and the water main's going. Right. This and is what it looks water, like. The water, but the water main's over, the water main's over right. here. Right, and the sewer is the on sewer there. The water there. main is virtually right here. And, and, and you can see the sewer manhole yeah. right there. There's a sewer manhole there and there's a sewer manhole. That's not a sewer manhole. So when you, when you look at the sewer manhole, it is a sewer yeah. manhole. And then you go back to that other picture, it's generally the same width um, that I'm looking at now, although it, it does look like it's been roughed up a bit. And most of the work has happened on the other side, All the work was right here. which makes it look a lot bigger. Um, I was out there prior to the trees being cut down, and they had it marked off where this, where this new water main was going, and only the trees that they had to take down were the ones that they did. This tree here was actually supposed to come down. Yeah, there's a couple that they didn't even want to. They said, we'll just see what happens. So those stumps were left up? They were purposely left up because that was what the wetland scientists had said that it would end up promoting growth. With the hope okay. of re-sprouting. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. um, going forward, um, besides the seed that's going down, um, George, is, is it, um, is there, can, some, can somebody remind me, is there an ongoing maintenance program for maintaining the vegetation around these lines? Is it to basically keep I think we mostly have to, I think herbaceous we have to do and shrub cover? This, this or what's the, just reporting we have to, I think with this reporting we have to do for two years, something like that. Okay, but, but um, for that easement, part of the agreement for them having the easement, is it all to keep, you know, big trees in check? Keep them trimmed so that their roots don't interfere They're with the They're going to keep the lines. easement um, accessible mm -hmm. to, for maintenance. Accessible, but what about um, tree no, no, maintenance? No, no big trees will be allowed to grow in the easement. Mm -hmm. so in the easement. Okay. Did, because they'll you, interfere with the... What, what happens, truthfully, right. on top of the water main, we don't care, as long as we can get in by a tax as a sort. So I'm showing you a picture of... I was out there, too, today. Um, and I, and I looked around, but I only took one picture of what's down on the ground right now. And that's leaf and stone. And that's, that's what that typically is. what's down there from, from one end to the other. I think the side that the water main was put on is a little more mucky, is a little, more mucky a little yeah. less stone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's it, left That's over. not what it appeared to be when, when you would first go out there. But I don't know how no, I did. thick that layer was. But I remember noticing that before, but it, before but it, construction happened. I would say that I can't imagine that this isn't what was down there in the first place because when I'm looking at the picture that George has up um, from the original, there was an area where nothing was growing yeah. and you would expect to have some sort of hard surface. Well, what George on. described was that the excavated material from the water line was put over top of the sewer easement and then the backhoe swung around, scraped that material back off, and put it back in the trench. Nope. And back, I'm pretty backhoes. sure that on at least working. one occasion that backhoe scraped more than the material it deposited from the water trench. Mm -hmm. And if you go through there and look, you can see the, the tracks where 
material was removed from over top of the sewer easement. But, and but, I'm sure that's what happened. But Jamie, I mean, in, in, and again, I, I haven't seen the site, but wasn't that just the gravel that we're looking at? I mean, wasn't that area, was there actually growth there? There was, was growth there. There, there weren't trees, there weren't, uh, there were some shrubs, there was some ground cover, there was vegetation. <laughs> and there was a, a horizon soil. That's my roof in, in many places. Okay. That's Let's go back to which. That's another town. That's where we're That's another town. Yeah. <laughs> right. I that's didn't realize side, I was that, live. Jamie, that's the side of the trench right there. There were some areas the gravel was right to the surface. Oh, that's the sewer manhole. Yeah, that's that's the the yeah. Man you can see the sewer yeah. manhole, and you can see that growth around it. See right behind the sewer manhole? Between there and the edge where the straw tubes are now, you can see the growth. That's what it looked like. I mean, it was, yeah. All that's gone. See, it will grow sprouts, back. They're all gone. It will grow back. I don't know why we had to take them down, though. Why couldn't they be in left? They'll stabilize the soil all winter. They'll that be soil the is going nowhere. That's. I'm sorry, Jamie. I totally disagree with you. That soil is going nowhere. We didn't. We didn't come out here and handpick, handpick vegetation. They went through there with a brush cutter six inches off the ground and went in and cut trees. The rest is just from moving dirt around. The, the other issue with that dis disturbed barren soil in the spring, invasive plants are going to come in there. Yeah, we don't want hay on it. Hmm? I have a picture. I have a picture of the easement cleared out prior to the water pipe going in, which might Actually, oh, I have plenty of pictures. I couldn't get them at, off my phone. If you look at that picture right there, see that sewer manhole? Yes. I think that's what we were just looking at. And in the previous picture, you saw green vegetation between that sewer manhole and is the tubes on the left, and there's this none there one now. Is this one right here? Yeah. So there's, they're digging the, the dirt over here. I know. There, the, all that vegetation that used to be there is now gone. All right. If we dig through a lawn and then put the loom back, the vegetation isn't there. All right. You have so, to give it time to grow. You're not even giving me. You're not even giving me a growing season. But you're saying you no did, vegetation You there. didn't excavate on the left side of that sewer manhole. The spoil pile went there, though. It went right. Just, it went right over here. I know. That's that's well. That's what I'm saying. Well, we had to put it here. What would you rather us do? Put it in the wet one? Just go down and fill in behind you. I mean, I know it's more difficult, but we we could have specified that. We didn't, but we could have. You can't That's dig a hole and hold dirt in midair and then put the pipe in the ground and fill behind you. If we did fill behind us, we put it to the side. The only way you can fill behind, fill behind like you would in the street, you have to get a truck in there, truck it out, and then truck it back in. That's creating more work. That's creating more damage to any and in, in, in compacting a lot more soil. I'm sorry, you're, you're, I'm sorry, so but my feeling is you're way off base in your comments. Okay. You're not giving us time to get through through a growing season or anything. This is prior to the water pipe going in. The soil was pretty stone, uh, rocky right in front of it. Um, this is right at the bank. That's right at the bank. Yeah. Right at the what? Right at the bank. The bank. Okay. Question? Mm -hmm. This, this being, go back, Chuck. This, the lack of vegetation you see there. Before, no, no earth equipment went in here, yeah. except except the except the front end loader to carry the pipe in. This is just going in to cut the trees. That's it. All right. I we weren't digging any ground to remove vegetation. I, I feel like we're wasting time. Why, why don't we talk about? It is what it is. Why don't we talk about what we're going to do going forward? on this project, what everyone wants to see going forward. What Are you going to put straw down instead of we don't. hay? I, my, my feeling is nothing has to be there. If you want something there, you tell me. That soil's not going anywhere. If you think something's going to erode, <laughs> I'll put whatever you want down. Chuck, <laughs> will you watch the inside? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got to watch that side. Uh, <laughs> I agree I'll, with... I'll put whatever you want, but that soil's not going anywhere. It's all peat. I just want to say I agree with um, the concerned voice so far that you know it could become a pardon the pun an avenue for uh, for invasives in that to that massively healthy wetland um, and I would really not like to see that happen but it does tend to happen but what, do what ever, could be done do you have anything you can do about that George hmm? do you have anything you can do about that 
I think it would just take the monitor for uh, the next would few have, years. We'd have to yeah, monitor, and I think that's what we. I think yeah. that's what I'd have to read yeah. through. But I think that's yeah. what we have to would do. Would a layer of, of of straw, be better, to keep the invasives out, or not? Uh, you, you could no? almost All introduce right. them with, with straw or hay. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, this stony, rocky soil is not going anywhere, anyways. Um, we have a leaf. We have leaf litter on it right now. Okay. So. I actually think that you should. Well, actually, we have leaves. We don't have leaf litter. We have leaves. It's a big on it. difference. Yeah. Well, it's not going anywhere, left or right, and the erosion control is right there. And if they have to rake it out in the spring, then that's fine. They have to wash the bank and the other soil that seems to have the problems. When we had the problems in the rain, which it rained very heavily after this project was finished, there was no erosion on this easement area, but there was erosion on the bank, which has been taken care of with jute matting, and in the neighboring property where there is lawn. So the jute matting was put down after that was initially put down when the cut was made? It was put down the following... This I don't know this when it was This jute matting that was in... Does that picture show the jute matting? Under uh, it doesn't It doesn't show it good, but there's... You say jute where, matting, we thought it was uh, in between, synthetic. In between these two is it's matting green. and... In, and it's what? Green. Yeah. It's green, but we thought it was synthetic. Is it jute? It's jute, yeah. Between these two stra uh, straw wattles and this one and the one down here that you can't see is where the matting went and the plantings were put in. So per, Per and, our and that, plan. that's yeah. not synthetic matting. I th thought it was a combination. It was funny. I, I thought, thought it. W synthetic. I thought it was almost like I a. It was monofilament. Almost like, yeah. I almost thought it was, but a combination of fiber and I'd ha I'd some sort of. I'd have to specifically ask the contractor and go back and look at it. I couldn't tell you. But anyway, um, so so far the bank stabilized as of this yep. week. Um, it's been stabilized ever since that happened. first rainstorm about like in August like the same day they finished it yeah we had it was the same it was oh, the day it was yeah. the day it was yeah. the day we the day the evening we finished it the following day when they didn't even, when they really weren't even finished yet that we had a small amount of erosion that was it and it was probably what about two feet wide yeah there Something was like there that. was a lot of movement on the on the uh, the brook was side. the brook was bone dry when we went through there was absolutely no water we didn't have to dewater we didn't have to dewater the entire day so then he then the contractor changed out the way he was doing the erosion control on the bank and just before the bank and that seemed to work out that was the only spot that I've seen so far and as far as movement left or right I haven't seen any of that I haven't seen any blowouts but there are some traps you know some some holes and some divots from tires up towards the other end. So there is a small list of things that we want done on this project. It it sounds like you're, there's we're asked we're being asked to wait and see what grows in next year. Obviously if they segregated the soil there's going to be a seed bank in that soil and what's yeah. coming up. Right. Um, is it going to work through what's down there? But what what about bringing in something? I don't know if that's what you asked for, Jamie. And then planting that on either side, making this thing only as wide as what you need to access it for maintenance. And then on top of that, there's some rocks that are not large enough. They're inadequate for what we want. And the, I I don't know how it happened, but there's some uh, cement blocks. Those were existing. The contractor put them, put them back. We already told him he's got to remove them and get larger rocks. Yeah, the rocks. They're You're going to remove those rocks? No, we're we removing. We want this. to have bigger. There was rocks. some concrete there that he put back in, and we told him to take the concrete out. And there's one of the rocks, a couple of rocks. These two rocks are too small. We want lots. This, this is a piece of concrete, and there's yeah. another piece of concrete over here. And this rock's too small. I think the spacing could be better. I I think that. Um, you know, you got to think of four-wheel drive access, or um, what are those things called, quads or ATVs. ATVs. Yeah, we got to make sure that those aren't getting in there. They can't what get in. They can't get in there right now. The they can't get in ATV. there now. Okay. 
For them to go in there right now, they have to go through the wetland area. Oh, Not bike. where we dug. You couldn't jump that rock? No. <laughs> I used to drive a motorcycle, man. That rock's nothing. That's a that's just intriguing to me. Okay. But, uh, but anyway, those are getting changed out. So that's not an issue. Can I, can and I then ask? We, oh, I'm sorry. And then, we're gonna, and then we're waiting until next year to see what grows. And we have two years of monitoring anyways, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think with what I know about the, the order of condition, if this commission is not satisfied with how that's coming in or creeping into that area that you need to maintain it, we're going to be asking for something plants shrubs yeah. I, I think i i have no problem with that but you know to bring this up now when we didn't even get a month of growing and we're out of the growing season i think it's so far premature it's so how wide you said you do not need access to the water main just the sewer we don't we well we we didn't we're going to need access to the water main if it ever breaks that's it other than that it's going to stay there we didn't put gravel back on top. We didn't put gravel. We said we were going to backfill with all the with exact excavated materials, and that's what we did. The only thing that not that you're going to need infrequent maintenance is the is the sewer main. So I mean, if okay, so we're what we're going to what we would like to do is occasionally, and you know, it doesn't have to be every year. It could be every other year. Um, we don't care. We can go on the high brush cut to keep it about a foot off the ground leave some growth down there but just so that we don't start getting two inch saplings or something growing through so that if we have to get in the emergency we can just easily drive in and gain access to the manholes so so you don't have any problems with shrubs an inch in diameter or left less going over that entire easement i'm not going to i'm not going to plant shrubs over the sewer easement i'll let what grows naturally grow over the sewer easement anything that's off the sewer easement which will be over here I don't have a problem planting stuff. Play whatever you want. And how would you access the sewer if you needed to do maintenance or cleaning? Move the barricades and drive right down. Move the With barrels what? and drive right down. With what though? What sewer jet, whatever we have to. What type of vehicle though? What's Our green machine, the sewer, this combination sewer jet back. Oh, that back. Yeah, that's why it has to be a nice stable gravel road. And that's why we'll drive the gravels there. The problem is right now we get some areas there's a foot of peat on top of it. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I wouldn't drive that truck down that easement right now. You'd lose it, I would guess. Well, at some point, we'll have to drive it down. Guarantee. So you wouldn't hesitate to drive that truck down that easement as it is right now? I wouldn't want to do it right now until we go through a winter period, but I know at some point we're going to have to. We have two manholes in there to get access to. Come see us before you do it. Hmm? Come see us before you do it. Um, if the sewer's backing up into the house, you'll get a phone call. That's it. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, this is the same thing that happened off of Walker's Brook. I right. mean, it was, I mean, that was an unfortunate incident. Yeah. But, but, you know, here we have an area that's cleaned out. George is going to need access. It's almost like we need to allow a certain bit of access there right okay. now and understand that that's going to have to happen. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, well we, said we said after the Walker's Brook thing, we were going to come up with a plan of what to do on some of these sewer and easements, and we haven't done it yet, so it's something we still have to submit to the commission. Of how we're going to, you know, how we plan on maintaining some of uh, these sewer easements in the future so that um, we don't have mature trees growing through it. George, how wide is the in between the hay bales on both sides? Um, I think it's 30 feet. Uh, it's. Yeah, it doesn't. It's a 30 foot wide utility easement, so it's just under 30 feet. So to get that truck in there you probably need what eight feet mm. 10 10 12 10 12 so 10 12 so there's room on both sides to maintain a decent access well, well, through the middle the, for emergency if you could growth on right now can you side. see these dash lines right here yeah that's basically what was gravel before and that's what we that's what, what we're going to maintain maintain okay so I, I think yeah well, I think we have to wait and see what grows in and if it's not sufficient then we'll talk about yeah. uh, I mean I, some yeah, things there going forward so that's next growing season, spring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now, a question I had. There was a comment made about some of the material that was left on the side. Um, if you want it all removed, I'd re remove it. 
Well, I, to take out the logs and the brush, but I don't want the leaf litter or that stuff gone. No, no, it's, I'm talking about on the side of the road. There's some of the trees that were the branches of trees that were cut down on the side of the road. If you want it removed, yeah. As soon as it's as yeah. soon as it's the ground's frozen, we'll go and remove it because I'm not yeah, going to go in now. I also saw a concrete. Yeah, he's going to get uh, that. The concrete. Green. That was off. The concrete pipe like a trash with the, thing. It's, right. With, yeah. with the metal. It's an old garbage bucket. It. it was on the side. He should have pulled it out. He didn't. We'll get that out. All right, get that out. It's an old garbage yeah. bucket. That that we didn't put there. That was there. That's this right here. Clearly that trash. We weren't going to use that to stop people no. from driving in. But I will say, we've been asked in the past when we when a tree falls down in the in a in a wetland area or something, okay. you right. leave the stump. Right. Yeah. I'm not leaving it anymore, because none of this would have been there. That, that's none not. Of, the, but none of this would have been there if we didn't get asked to leave it. That's we not, got asked to leave it. That's not the. Now stump. we got to go back in and get it out. The stump, we asked to be left because of the roots. Those. Debri that debris on the left doesn't have any roots. It's isolated logs and brush that were thrown and in. And we've got asked to leave it there. And I'll almost say is well, next time. Past, but here, I'm gonna just we're just, not going to leave it anymore. So They're I've all coming up. I've been out to up. this site a bunch of times. I talked to Ryan. I talked to the guys that work in it. Richie, work there. Yeah. Richie, was, Richie was there going through. Every single I never talked to the guy cutting down the trees or saw that gentleman. But I know there was a bunch of stuff out. Every time I walked it, I said, this stuff goes. Never talked to you about it. No, nope. and it, it it just does sounds like me that to me that you're saying when you when a tree falls across the road and and three quarters of it is in the swamp or the wetland, we always get mad at you when you pull the whole thing out. It's kind of different than what we're talking about here. I mean, the piles of of debris is not what we want. Now, there's one naturally that fell down. You might have saw that because mm -hmm. the root ball is still on it. <coughs> yes, across across the very. It's on back. the right hand side, if I yeah. remember correctly. That actually that just fell stay. in one of the rainstorms. So that should stay. That's okay. that's one of the ones we'd have stay. But this chopped up stuff that looks like firewood or anything that's clustered together. Take it up. Yeah, and then, it I up. I don't think there's that much because I it looked I, I think I think for the good, most part you, you have you have some here on the left hand side. As you and there's in. some pot. There's like a cut up piece of fi firewood on just as you're entered on the on the right hand side. I mean I I, 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 I didn't walk through there because I didn't have my boots on. But I mean I walked through and and. I think most of it's right near the Ivy Street side. If it's near the I Ivy Street end, they're well, close enough that we can reach, reach in and grab it. Well, again, I think we need to be more specific in the future about what we expect well, before the fact. All I can say is I, I think you're you're looking for something that will not, well, that will be there. It's just that you're looking at it right after we went through, and you're, I don't know what your expe expectations are within a, a week of after we went, uh, went through an, an area. I think you're asking for something that's impossible. So yeah, are you asking for, so when they took off that, when they segregated the soil and then they brought it back over to maintain whatever, whatever the duff layer was at that point? Uh, basically, yes. So we should have come up with an innovative way so they didn't have to store excavated material over native vegetation. If, if you'll remember, or if you, you think back on when we issue a permit on, uh, for a residence, we prohibit stockpiling of material within the buffer zone. And here we allowed stockpiling material within the wetland. That was not smart on our part. We should have prohibited I don't think it was that. stockpiling. It was there, and then it went right back in. It didn't spend, any, it didn't spend one night there, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah. There's only one way to do it, and you need a truck there. And that means you put the truck on it and you compress and compact everything. We, we have a bright engineering department and we had a bright wetland scientist. I bet we could have come up with an idea. And we'll try next time. It's, it's something for next time and yep. something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we done we're with this? With or, this. Or? We're going to, well, I'll put it on the agenda for some time in the spring. In the spring. So can, I, can I ask the question? I'm uh, I'm not clear about whether or not we have consensus about pulling that wood out or not. No, um, it's coming up. <coughs> the wood debris. Um, so, you know, I'm hearing George saying what George you were saying something like, "I'm going to pull all the wood out. I'm just always going to pull the wood out." I don't think that's. I don't think that's what we're looking for necessarily. We get asked to have a leave, so what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? We get asked during the project, the, the contractor was asked to leave some of the wood there. He left some of the wood there. Now we're getting asked to take it out. 
the, the contractor that was taken out the that cut the trees on the last day when they were like grading it and, and getting out of there they were waiting for that guy to come and pick up a bunch of wood and then the contractor that was doing the water main said I'm just gonna drag this stuff out of there so I don't know what happened to this this tree cutting guy but it seems like he wasn't very attentive to what this job needed. Again, I don't think there's a lot of wood out there. And there shouldn't be piles, because that's not natural. And there shouldn't be any logs, because that's not natural. And it shouldn't define the channel or the, or the, the easement area, because that's not natural. So all those have to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure George can figure right, out Right, but that, that one tree that fell with the root ball, mm -hmm. that should stay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they, they didn't cut that. That just right. fell they didn't over. Cut so right. that would, that you're not going to take that anyway. Who knows that, though? Cut debris. Right. I, I say, I, I haven't yeah. walked through. I so have boots on today, but I think a lot of stuff sure that you see is on the edge right by Ivy. Right. right. That, and and that there, we can, that. that there, and if that's all there is, that can easily be removed right from the edge, and we don't even have to walk through the area. Think, I think you're right. Chuck, was there a couple other minor things that... No, it's just, no, it just that we wanted the larger rocks in there, and it was jute netting before, but that's there, so that's you not a problem. And we had thought that there was some um, missing erosion control, but that ha that wasn't the case. Are you going to generate a list that we can? No, it's really work just off remove just the gonna... trees, to get rid of this, put in, bring in bigger stone, mm -hmm. and to get rid of those uh, cement blocks. That's you don't need a list for that. And then we're going to wait. And we're going to do that ourselves. We're not going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. that's that's, and then I, we can walk it later, well, and I can might just walk down to George and say, we "Hey, might we not need, it. need a list for that, but it'd be nice if it was accurately reflected in the minutes." that George agreed to do those four things. Could you recite them again? They're going to be done before. They're yes. going to be done before your next meeting. Okay. Yes. George is going to remove the we already uh, got to Peter's cut part. tree limbs mm -hmm. and any brush pile. Mm -hmm. He's going to remove uh, yard waste. The, the uh, garbage pail. The garbage pail. The garbage pail. Yeah. After, if we can get down there easy enough before it freezes, fine. If not, we'll wait till the ground fr freezes. If you we can. have to get down there on the machine. I'm not going to drive the machine through there right now. All right. And then uh, the, the two boulders. cement blocks at the IBC street and side are going to be removed. And the cord wood, if you didn't get that before. And then we just need, I think we need better placement Thank of the you. boulders and larger yep. boulders. Well, we got some big ones. Are there any questions from the public? Some there. The guy grabbed them. Oh, what's there? Is there? No, no, he took them away. Go for it. Yeah. Any questions from the public? To, okay. To Benedicto or whatever that name is. All right. Let's George, are we, we going to talk about the Beaver, Beaver Dam? We have a Beaver Dam that's um, on the upstream side of the railroad tracks near the garage by train, uh, Grant's property. Uh, it's an area that we are, when we do have problems, I mean, the, the water tape, the, the brook level is typically high anyways um, in that area. It's probably about a foot higher than what historically it should be for who knows what reason, but there's various um, questions of why it's high. Um, but they like that it, truly, if, yes, they do. if there's a heavy rainstorm with that dam that's in there, um, we, will, we are going to cause flooding of people's properties and basements all the way into Wakefield. Yeah. I mean, uh, last, I believe Jamie, I, I think you were here. So this is over there on the downstream side of Home Depot? It's, no, yeah. it's on the upstream side of Walker's Brook from alongside the Public Works garage. It goes all the way back to um, Ash Street. Yeah. And we have a homeowner in, uh, there's been some correspondence between the Wakefield Conservation Commission um, and, and Reading's Conservation Commission and my office in uh, the town of General Wakefield. There's a red. Uh, the Is it my check? It's right here. This. Take a one in. That's all right. This is the garage here. This whole wetland and, and the brook is right through here. And the uh, beaver dam's right here. And this drains this entire wetland. It uh, drains. It's part of the uh, drain for the entire wetland. It drains towards Walker's Brook. And it drains towards, towards Walker's, Walker's Brook. Yeah. Drains towards Walker's Brook. And these people here 
house way over here by uh, 128. George, we can't see what you're pointing at there, if you don't mind. <coughs> Thanks. Do you want this, George? No, that's okay. I mean, when this floods, we affect a, a, a few of the properties over here. There's another property way over here, just before you get 128. Uh, that's been uh, numerous correspondence between Wakefield Conservation Commission and ours and yourselves regarding our. Be up to the northeast it's, there. Yeah, you the took it off the page. Garage up here, to the north. No. Uh, regarding our old water and sewer easement down here. Did you, you, you dug, you hand dug, we dug a one ditch. trench. We never were able to get another trench because it was, it was still flooded out. We couldn't get in there. We were able this to dig one trench. Around in this location, yeah. we were never able to get over here. I bet you'll do it soon. <laughs> well, I don't know. We haven't walked yeah, out there lately. It's funny because even in, you know, when we dug this one, there was water on this side, not on this side. And, and the the uh, Wakefield Conservation Commission, was, I mean, the town of Jay was 100% correct. But if you but once you get past that point, the water level was equal on both sides. So who knows what's blocking it? But I mean, a beaver dam in this brook causes problems with these houses and the houses right over here as it's crossing Ash Street. That map we would indicate let it stay there. That map would indicate there's no defined channel upstream of Ash Street, is that correct? Upstream, no there is there's there is a defined channel along this section here. How far it goes I don't know. Uh, I know it flattens out as it gets through cross street through this portion of the wetland, I'm really not sure. So, so that beaver dam is there now, right? The beaver dam, can you slide this down, Chuck? Yeah. The beaver dam right now is, right yeah, right about here. But the stream is not outside of the channel. No, not, not at the between moment. Between there and Ash Street. The, the stream is not topping the bank? Not topping the bank downstream of Ash Street. Downstream of Ash Street? I didn't look at downstream of Ash Street yet. Well, I mean, between the Beaver Dam and Ash Street, it's totally within the banks, right? I don't know. I did not look at Ash Street. I believe it probably is still within the banks, uh, limits of the bank. I know when we get a heavy rainstorm, because we shot elevations, the difference in water levels that we experience between Ash Street and the garage in Walkersburg Drive is about a foot. That's it. So I can go. I was just going to ask about methods and and equipment that you're using to take out the dam. Driven where? Hmm? Driven where? That's a parking lot right next. Yeah, to it's next to a parking lot. Parking lot right next to it. The parking lot right next to it is what, maybe eight okay. feet from the pavement to the edge of the brook. Maybe ten. Very accessible. You're making it easy on us. So, so, uh, so if you take out the dam, are you taking out the animals as well, or well, we can't take out the dam until we take out the animals? And animals it's my understanding that the best. Board of Health is um, not going to give a special permission. Um, and I just, it's from what I think Chuck was saying. I haven't talked to him. All right, you know, maybe Ryan was telling me I can't remember, but. Um, the uh, season is coming upon us very shortly, so he's just going to wait for the season. Mm -hmm. We've already made arrangements for a trapper, but we have to wait for the official okay for the Board of Health first. Well, I guess I'm confused. You said the Board of Health is not going to give you permission to do it outside the season. But the season is, I think the season for trapping beavers is it's not for us to, to, to April 15th and to to trap outside of that yeah. time you need an emergency permit which will allow you to actually not only trap but not have to go into it to get the animals tagged or and you can also use different traps which are easier and most trappers like to use those different traps so there's a lot of advantage to getting an emergency permit but one wasn't offered for this and the season's there and he can use a suitcase trap to do his work Chuck knows more about beavers than I do. I don't, I don't have Probably any questions. <laughs> any other questions from the commission? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a combination of uh, brush and mud, so I mean, it's, uh, you I, could I, probably I, scrape the top off and then get the most with the <clears throat> Chuck, cloth. do you have any issues? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do my thing that, okay. I, that I've been doing. Um, so, uh, 
So I, I did talk to um, Chris Cole, and I went down there with Chris Cole, and I and I have, and I Who's know Chris I Cole. Know, Chris Cole is an engineer for the DP, DPW, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Chris Cole uh, brought this to my attention. I told him what I knew about how the process works, and we went out and we checked out the dam, and that dam is I'm going to call it a maintenance dam. I don't know what the beavers call it, but it's a dam in a long <coughs> run. There's probably other ones in that run that that they're just going in and blocking up. So to find a couple more up there, I wouldn't be surprised. This dam, if you walk out on it, has a beaver slide on it. And what they do is they come up to it and they always go over the same spot. And that's why everyone knows where to trap them, because that's where they're going. So that's about a foot lower and only about three inches higher than the water. So that slide <coughs> is about a foot wide, about a foot deep into the dam, and about three inches above the existing water. So when it rains, that the one foot water wide on the, would, up, on the upstream side or the downstream side? It, it, goes over the, it goes from one side of the dam to the other. I know, but you said three inches higher than the on water. On the upstream side. On the upstream side. Um, so any rain that's not catastrophic is going to use that area. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is a lot of times that when you try, you know, we're always have to make a decision because we're killing beavers and we're removing dams and there's a lot of habitat out there. And when we first walked out there, there was a great blue heron. And that's what you get. You get these little spots, these little special areas. With this being so close to a parking lot, and having that accessibility, and every time I say beaver deceiver, people cry about how much maintenance is involved. To have it so close to a parking lot, within five feet, to reach in, to scoop out the center, to put in a pipe, to drop in a cage, and then the maintenance is just rip that stuff out, work on it on the parking lot, and then drop it back in. It seems like an ideal location for something like that to happen. So we may allow this beaver dam to be removed today or this time. And I think that's what we said at Track Road the last time also. The health department said, we're going to allow you to trap the beavers this time, but we want to look for um, a way not to, to go away from that because it, it doesn't make any sense coexisting, whatever she was saying. But to me, and I, I, put, in, I put in three myself with the help of Skip Lyle, uh, who is a guy that puts these things in for the town of Boxford. And they have about 15 in that town, where 10 of them work and 5 of them don't. And we don't know why those 5 don't, but the beavers up there are smarter, the, there's too much mud, there's too much uh, leaf litter that's coming through. They get blocked all the time for some reason. Well, it, for the 10 that work, and if it works here, would the upstream elevation remain approximately what it is today? You set that. You could, so the engineers can set that to wherever they want it. And where would we set that? At an approximate existing elevation? Well, you, you, can't, you don't want to drop it too much because then that activates the beaver's senses and they will just go upstream a little bit and set another dam. So you got to be within like six inches. So you could drop it six inches, maybe eight, and, and be okay. Uh, you could drop it... You could get rid of these beavers, drop it a whole bunch, and then put the beaver deceiver in, and you could set the new elevation that way too. But it's, that's, that's usually what happens. If you drop it too much too quickly, they just kind of move up a bit and put a new dam in. If we were to move forward next time with um, requiring beaver deceiver, um, what's the level of effort and cost? And I know who, and who would do it? Know, it's one piece of pipe, 20 inch pipe, and yeah. then some, what do we use? We use galvanized or uh, just some square sheets of, I don't forget what that stuff was called. But they made a round circle out of it and cut it and then zip tied it all together and wired it up together. There's a little bit of effort going on there. That's like a day. five hours worth of work. It's definitely a day to put it together, yeah. but not with a backhoe five feet away. So we had to move rocks by ourselves, hip waders, dig through the dam, never really got it low enough in the dam we felt satisfied because you run into logs going across and there's all there's a whole bunch of stuff that they bring in and it, it's hard to do. 
but with a backhoe and some chainsaws, you could set that thing perfect. And it may work, and I think maintenance would be as easy as grabbing it each twice a, twice a year, pulling it onto the parking lot, cleaning it out, and dropping it back in. And the purpose of this is to, you don't have to trap the beavers, is that correct? You don't, not in this and, location. And you can maintain a um, elevation. elevation and maintain some of this habitat you spoke about. Mm -hmm. I, so that's the advantage. That's the advantage. It adds maintenance. It's another thing that they need to do. That it, that's the disadvantage. And that's something you do twice a year, right? We've done it twice Depends. a year. The ones that haven't worked have always been a problem. Chuck, you didn't answer the second half of Nika's question about cost. What do they cost? Yeah. Well, I don't know what that stuff costs. I think 300 bucks would probably do it. And then how much would George Oh, George, what it costs, you so when, when Skip Lyle puts one in, it's like three grand. So because um, it's, he, he okay. installs it himself, builds it himself, and then you get two maintenance periods out of that. And that's, that's the three grand. Three grand, $3,600. But it's about $300 for the material. George? George? I, I, I'm not concerned about the cost. I don't think the cost is, is that major. My concern is, is I've never seen one work well. Um, I don't, out of the ones that Chuck's talking about, I don't know what the volume of these brooks carry. My biggest concern is you could probably set something so that your normal daily flow of water could be handled without causing problems upstream. My concern is what happens in a major storm. Is enough water going to be able to pass through here so we don't do damage to private properties and businesses upstream? That's my only concern. But we could set something like that so it would work? Fine. Well, why, why wouldn't we, in this, especially in this location, it sounds like, why wouldn't we uh, attempted here. I, I have and no if it problem. doesn't I work, no then we send the back it. away and we. I have no problem trying it, but the, the thing is, is that you know the first time we get a phone call that says, "Hey, you're flooding me out," I, you know, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, we, it's well, going to get could, ripped out. We we could approve that in advance. That's going to get ripped out. Yeah, because that's it, my that's my concern. In, in a major storm, though, I, I've never seen one of these. But in a major storm, wouldn't water top the dam? And pass the, those it excess would. flows above the height of the dam. Right. It's so just we, a matter of when. We didn't have to anticipate when. that, but I guess you could put a couple new other pipes in the dam. Like right, right now, the dam's elevation. even with the top of the bank of the stream. Say that again. Right now, the Beaver Dam's virtually even with the top of the bank. Pretty much close to being even with the top of the bank of the stream. You know, I'm, if you're that, that's my only concern. I. Well, well we, 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 could, we could put you know, in could and, and Al or somebody said another pipe at the top. So if the water gets high enough, we pass all that. You're dealing it. with a major brook. You're not dealing with a small brook. You're, the tremendous amount of water goes through there and stuff. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm. And the, they are trapping the beavers. Those beavers will be gone. So it's not. Even if those beavers are gone, that is a perpetual beaver right. target. So unless reach. this, this here, trapper tra can't get them over it. Yeah. Th this is, I mean, anyone can trap beaver with the, with the owner's permission, and they have that. So those beavers are going to be caught. That's all there is to it. Anyone coming down to that, anyone, any beaver coming down to that dam to maintain it is, is going to get trapped. Yeah. Well, it's so close to the DPW garage. I mean, it's not like it would be a long trip. Well, they have to do that first. So if, if your trapper is not successful, then I think this is something we so just he needs to catch. I don't know. I used to think you need to catch six, eight, last something like that. Last time when we had the major dam, which was downstream of Jordan's, um, it was like six or seven. Yeah. The male and female were. You can were feel confident like if that's, that's what you catch. Fifty and sixty-five pounds. Yeah, so those are the, the male and female. Travis yeah. said he never seen such a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> We're breeding them here. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Within a year, they'll be back. From well, the some, kids have to go someplace. Beaver, but other beaver will be well, back. Well, that's the problem, and it's, yeah. and, you know, what are you paying, you know, Every how much maintenance? I mean, it's easy.